Praise the Lord, everybody. We give God all the honor. We give God all the praise for the, the great things that he has done. And even now, how he has brought us to this place and brought us to this time. This is Servants for Christ Baptist Church. And we give God all the glory for the great things that he has done inside of our lives. God is indeed good and he is great. He is, in fact, greatly to be praised. So we thank God for everything that he's done. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to each one of you who are joining us this morning. This is, again, Servants for Christ Baptist Church. I thank God for each of you. My brothers and sisters, the book of Psalms declares these words. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sit in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law does he, did, does he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bring forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he does shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Indeed, this is the day that the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This is, in fact, the day that the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let us bow, my brothers and sisters, for a word of consecrated and concentrated prayer. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your peace. And even now, oh God, we thank you for your presence in our lives. We thank you for your grace and your mercy and for all the wonderful things that you have done. You have brought us into another year, 2021. And we are so humble. We're so pleased. We're proud to be a part of the ministry that you have given to us. And now, God, we pray mightily, mightily for servants for Christ Baptist Church, yeah. each member of our church, each member that may be experiencing some type of hurt, some type of harm, indeed some type of danger, even our extended friends who are going through trouble. We ask your blessings upon them in this new year and beyond. Bless our church, Lord, spiritually, mentally, financially. Bless us, Lord, in, in a way that only you can as we begin this new trek, this new season of church growth, of church polity, indeed, of church evangelism, of church mission. We thank you, God, for how you are going to drive us through this year. We ask for your presence and your power to be in our lives and in the lives of all of our friends, those who are supporting our church. We give you praise and we give you honor. We pray also today, dear God, for this country, yes. the United States of America, yes. for all the atrocities that, that come upon us on January the 6th. But Lord, we're not looking at the past as much as we're looking to the future. And we know that you are the author and finisher of our faith. And so, dear Lord, guide us through these tumultuous times and cause us to be even greater, better Christians than what we are today. Bless the leaders of our country right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Lord, we're praying for those who have COVID-19 or symptoms of those who are hospitalized and for the families of those who have experienced tragedy for family members that have succumbed to the COVID-19. We ask you, Lord, to let your hands stay. Find the antidote which they say they have, but make it positive for all of us that need it. We ask your love, your continued blessings, and we thank you, Lord Jesus, for the grace that you showed us. We know that without faith, it is impossible to please you. And so, Lord Jesus, we thank you 
for allowing us to come into this year where our church theme is transform yourself. Transform yourself. Found in the book of Revelation chapter 21 verse 5. We thank you God for each person that is present here today. We ask your love and your grace and your mercy on all of us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 May God bless you. My brothers and sisters, we're just so happy and excited to see you all today. And I, I just want to say a thank you to all of the people who, in fact, have uh, worked with us and helped us and, and caused us to be a great church last year. All of you that indeed uh, supported the church in more ways than one. And I was thinking about that this morning, how since March when we started to become fully aware of the pandemic that this church has not missed one service. We have provided ministerial service since March every Sunday whether it's in the pulpit or whether it is through our television broadcast and our doors have not closed and so we are very grateful to God for that for what he's done and blessed us. Yes. We've, been, we've been faithful over a few things yes, and we thank God for that. I thank God that we have been able to reach over 3,000 people per week on our social media. More than 3,000 people per week on our various platforms. I thank God for that. Yes, my brothers and sisters, this is, in fact, New Year's Sunday. And so what I want to talk about today is a, a, a new start, a new beginning and I've taken some excerpts from my good friend, Dr. Stephen Olford, and I combined it with some of the things that I want to put, put forth today for your hearing and your understanding. And my brothers and sisters, on this New Year's Sunday, I, first of all, my heart is troubled and my spirit has been impacted by the events that I just prayed about. Yeah. In fact, I, I just got finished praying about the events that happened on January the 6th in this country. But before I, I, I get into that, I wanna think about a positive note. It was almost four years to the day, January the 10th, 10 years, 10 days rather, before President Barack Obama left office that we had the esteemed pleasure four years ago today to receive an invitation from uh, Trustee Patricia Strickland and her husband, Bobby Strickland, who invited us to come to the White House to meet President Barack Obama in the Oval Office four years ago today when we took a picture and greeted him on his way out. Yeah. We had no idea at that point that the impending inauguration of the next president of the United States would bring us such grief and tragedy almost four years to the day, 14 days. So what I, what I want to say is my heart is stricken and I'm in grief is one, is one simple thing. And, and that is, first of all, I just want to say this. First of all, I'd like to give a moment of silence, a moment of silence for U.S. Capitol Police Officer Brian D. Yeah. Sicknick, yeah. Yeah. 42 years old, National Guard veteran who participated in one tour in Afghanistan, killed, killed on January the 6th. Let us bow for a moment of silence and give honor for one of our nation's heroes, U.S. Capitol Police Officer Brian D. Sicknick.
Amen. 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 Praise God. As I was going through the moment of silence, my mind was reflecting upon what I saw and what we witnessed as a nation. Indeed, I'd like for you to turn in your Bibles to the book of Revelation, chapter 21, verse 5. As we prepare to enter into our focus this morning, which is our sermon theme for the year, Transform Yourself. There was a lot of transformation that took place here for our nation this week. The terrorist attack on the Constitution of the United States on January the 6th, 2021, culminating an insurrection, death, and destruction in the United States Capitol. President-elect Joe Biden stated that those rioting were criminals, thugs, and domestic terrorists, among other things. Biden went on to tell the nation that the sitting U.S. president was the cause of this insurrection and said that the 25th Amendment of the U.S. Constitution should be expected to occur or that Congress should take, have to take some action through a second impeachment of a sitting United States president for insurrection. Yes. Congress is expected to impeach the current president. Yes. Many in our faith community, my brothers and sisters, are alarmed that an insurrection of this magnitude did not protect the nation's elected leaders as they were in session fulfilling the role that they swore oath to transition and transform the government. They were uncertain about their security as this insurrection and riot took place in the United States Capitol as they were concerned about their security death loom over their heads and indeed within the halls of Congress as battle and death were raging around them for control of the United States government. The faith community has expressed absolute sadness, and I agree, and, and am in mourning with them at this moment, about this whole ordeal of lives being lost and threatened simply because of a disagreement on the outcome of the election this year, last year. A democratic election that this country has upheld for thousands and hundreds of years, conducted in accordance with the traditions and the laws of the nation. Many, many are further outraged as they were witnessing something that when Black Lives Matter had a protest in this country, the law enforcement was totally ready and totally prepared to do whatever was necessary to stop that protest, even in the point of view when the nations came to when the nation came together at the death of George Floyd, the sitting president ordered tear gas and rubber bullets be shot at the protesters right. during that time. Mm -hmm. Even President-elect Biden drew a striking contrast to the notable distinctions in treatment and pledged equality when he and Vice President-elect Harris assumed office on January the 20th, 10 days from now. Our sentiments are strong and we are patriots. People want to know, well, why is it that black folk didn't go up and tear up the Capitol or rampage all over the nation? Well, there was some destruction and there was some looting, but it wasn't mainly the black people in the country. Okay. Nevertheless, my brothers and sisters, we see our country at a crossroads 
when we need the nation to come together and begin a healing process and begin to implement the laws, orders, and statutes as we all have been living under all of these years. And there shouldn't be any exception for privilege. And so, my brothers and sisters, we begin our sermon today with that backdrop. With the backdrop of not only you transforming yourself, but the nation transform yourself. Transform yourself to be all that you can be. Transform yourself to be what God Almighty, through the saving grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, would have you to be as you witness these things yourself. Yeah. Romans 12.2 teaches us something very, very clearly. As the Bible says to us, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Verse 2, here it is. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. Yeah. Revelation, which is our theme for this year. Our theme for this year, Revelation 21.5 teaches us these words. The Bible says, and he that sat on the throne said, behold, I make all things new. What, what, is, what is newness? What, what does newness mean? Newness is novel. Newness is appearing for the first time. Newness is means to be fresh or unused. And as you prepare to transform yourselves this year, we want you to do one thing that the Bible teaches us. Forget those things which are behind and reach forth unto those things which are before. Paul declares to us, I press forward the mark for the prize of the high calling, the high calling uh, of our, our Lord and Savior, of Jesus Christ. Amen. That is something right there to get excited about. That is from the book of Philippians chapter 3, verses 13 and 14. Yeah. Yeah. My brothers and sisters, today uh, there's much to focus on when we start to think about transforming ourselves. Indeed, we should forget the things which are behind us. We should, for, we should foresee the things which are before us. That's the second point. And thirdly, we should fulfill the things which are beyond us. Yeah. Let me repeat it again for those of you that might have some idea about how to transform yourself. You see, forget those things which are behind us. Those things that occurred to us in the year of 2020, forget them. Foresee, foresee the things which are in front of you, the things that are before you. And thirdly, we fulfill the things which are beyond us. Yeah. If we can focus on, on that in the days and the years to come, then we ought to be in a situation where our lives can be fulfilled and we can meet those things. We can meet those things that God has for us. We can transition our lives into the newness of life. Mm -hmm. yeah. We should forget those things that are behind us. This, uh, uh, Paul says that uh, this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind. And one of the greatest barriers to making a new start is the horror of the past. Indeed, your past failures, as well as your past successes, Amen. constantly harass us until we are afraid to attempt anything new. Mm. A lot of times we get caught up in, I can't do what I want to do because of whatever reason or excuse you come up with. Well, I don't want to move forward because I failed on this in the past. Or because I don't look handsome. 
or because I didn't put on the right dress or I don't have the right clothing or because I cannot speak eloquently. Well, Moses couldn't speak eloquently either. But one thing that he knew is that when God said that my presence will be with you, you too should know that wherever you go, if you're walking in faith, our theme for last year, that God will be walking with you. Secondly, Amen. we should forget the things that are behind us, your past sins. Mm, yeah. Many of us are living in our past sins. Yeah. Other people try to hold your past transgression or sin over your head. You are a whoremonger. You are an adulterer. You are a thief. You are a liar. You're no good. Low down. Ready. Because you transgress the laws of God. We all, well, let me speak for myself. I have transgressed the laws of God. Many of you don't understand Maybe you too have done something that has been an offense to God. I know I have. So I'm not going to say many of y'all because I don't know what y'all have done. But I do know that the Bible tells me that there's none righteous, no, not one. That's right. Yes. And that includes you. Amen. Forget those things that are behind you. Forget your past sins. Uh, there can be no forgetting without forgiveness. For God requires that which is past. Paul has doubtlessly conscious in his mind of the many failures and sins in his life, the way he blasphemed the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I don't think that some of you have blasphemed the name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Y'all yes. didn't call God no mother names. Or no names that are disgraceful, disrespectful to God or denied Jesus Christ as the Son of God. I can imagine that what Paul did, that God must have haunted Paul day and night. But the time came when what David said in Psalm 51, that my sins are forever before me. And we cannot run away from it. Forget those sins. Forget those things that you did that were an offense to God. And in a similar way, as you transition yourself, uh, you would like to have a fresh start in your life. You must experience the forgiveness of your past sins. Adultery, adultery, homosexuality, gay, lesbian, lying, cheating. Whatever it was that you did was an offense to God, forget it. And transition yourself into something new. Past success. Many of you are walking around. I had this amount of success and I opened up this business and I became this or that or whatever you say you did or whatever. Forget about that. As you transition yourself and you go into a new start, Forget about your past success. I'm forgetting about the success that our church had in 2020 to sustain. I'm forgetting about the broad media exposure that our church had. I'm forgetting about the boards that I served on, that I resigned from. I'm forgetting about the school that I resigned from. Because the past success, like your past failure, have nothing to do with your future and your transition in yourself. That's right. Amen. Yeah. Don't get puffed up to think for a second. Amen, somebody. Y'all, I'm not saying amen with me today. I'm going to have to go ahead and preach to myself. Amen, somebody. One of the most subtle of devices the enemy has is slowing you down in our Christian lives and, and, and engaging our minds and hearts. Hallelujah. With the memory of our past successes. If we're going to live lives of present holiness and victory, we must of necessity consecrate more on today than yesterday. Concentrate on our how you can transition yourself. Yes, yes. Yes. That's right. Y'all don't have to uh, come, 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 come on in here. Come on. Amen. Amen. Bring it on. We should foresee the things which are 
beyond us. Reaching forth. Reaching forth unto those things which are before us, Paul says. Reaching forth to those things which are before us. Those things that I don't know. Those things that I don't understand. Faith is the substance of the things hoped for. The evidence of the things unseen. I don't know what my future is. I don't know what my future looks like. But I'm going to reach forth to those things that are unknown to me. And so should you. Amen. Reach forth into those things which are before. Paul says, I press, he says, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ. Amen. Amen. Uh, let, let me stop right here. Okay. Push stop button. Paul is saying, I press to the mark of the high calling. As you transform your lives and as you transform yourself, Amen. press toward the mark of the holy calling in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that your life may be transformed mm. into the newness of life. Amen. Yes. Some of you are sitting there right now, you say, hmm, I don't know what, it, uh, what he's talking about. What we're talking about is transforming your life, transforming your thoughts, transforming your mind, transforming your mouth, yeah. transforming your eyes. Yeah. Because we know that there are three sins that basically keep us out of the right relationship with God. And that is lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Transform yourself to a position of humility. Yeah. Walk humbly before our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. In other words, my brothers and sisters, when Paul says that he's reaching forth unto those things which are before us, he's pressing toward the prize of the high calling, he's talking about living holy. Living holy before a holy God, living holy in the place, in the phase of this pandemic. Living holy when people tell you that you are no good. Amen now. Living holy when people tell you you're nothing. When people come up against you and do all manner of evil toward you. Living holy before God. Yes. Reach forth unto the things of the high call. Amen, somebody. Amen. In other words, my brother and sister Paul is saying I press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. The picture is still that other runner whose eyes, whose eyes are on the finish line. No one can ever make a success in life without having a goal before him. We cannot no longer walk around aimlessly without any goals in our life. I asked my wife, what are your goals for this year? Amen, somebody. Amen. Ask my friends, what are your goals this year? What are you going to accomplish? Are you still going to sit there like this? I don't know what to do. I don't know where to go. I'm going to sit here and look. I'm going to sit here and do nothing. No, we want you to have a goal. I taught my son every year, you are to accomplish something. Every year, you are to have completed a training course Somewhere. Every year you should get some type of certification. A promotion. Reading your Bible more. Every year you should accomplish something and not sit there. As though you don't have a thought in your mind to move forward. To reach forth for the high calling of the prize of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Without doubt. The prize is the reward at the judgment seat of Christ. What greater achievement in life can any believer have uh, to, than to foresee of being crowned on that day? Well done, my good and faithful servant, uh, that you've been faithful over a few things. Amen, somebody. Yeah. And that I will make you ruler over many. Amen. We don't want to get up to the, uh, the, the, the place of glory where our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is. 
and stand there and look like this. Well, what did you do? Which, did you go out and did you ask somebody? Uh, do you understand that Jesus Christ is Lord of the world? Did you go out and witness to somebody and say, uh, Jesus is my Savior? Did you feed those that were hungry? You stood there and looked like this. Transform yourself. Apostle Paul tells us these things. Paul says, I have fought a good fight. Some people get in the ring and they run. Being fearful of Satan and his devices. Mm. Don't stand up and fight for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Don't stand up and challenge those fiery darts that will come forth at them, but seek a place to hide. Paul says, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. Mm -hmm. yeah. I look at my beloved mother in the hospital right now. It breaks my heart when I listen to her talk about her life. If she has an altered state of mind because of a stroke. And she makes these statements. I'm not the same as I used to be. I can't do no more. I used to go out in the country and milk two cows every morning at 5 o'clock. Mm -hmm. All the people in the house, I had to go out and get the fire started for everybody in the house, 15 people in the house. I had to do it. I had to struggle all my life, and I'm just not the same. My mind's not the same. I can't think the same. It breaks your heart. And the thing I was thinking about is you transform yourself, transform the people in your household. Transform your mother and father. You do not know, you do not know when that moment of disaster is going to cause a new reality for you. Amen. Transform yourself and your mind to cause you to think differently, to act differently. Paul goes on to teach us about the redemptive passion of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He said that I may know him and follow him, the fellowship of his suffering being made comfortable unto death. This is more than suffering for Christ. It is suffering with Christ. And many of us choose not to suffer with Christ as we transform ourselves. You're sitting there, you're saying, well, how can I transform myself? Well, why not transform yourself by just starting to do the right things in life? Why not transform yourself by being all that you can be for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? Why not transform your life so that God will have complete control over you and your life? My brother says, I, I, I don't have much more to say because there's nothing else that needs to be said. I just want you to focus in on, on a couple of things real brief and very, very quickly so that you can get the substance of what it is that we've been trying to educate and teach on today. First of all, we should forget those things which are behind us. Amen. Yeah. Last year, 2020, forget it. Past sins must be forgiven. Past successes must be forsaken. Secondly, we should forgive, foresee. We should foresee the things which are before us. There's certain things in life that you can't control. I just said it. My mother could not control the fact that she had a stroke. My son had a car accident. Almost told in his car, he, he, he remained safe. You can't control the eventualities in life when you lose your job or you get stricken with a disease or high blood pressure or whatever. These are the eventualities of life. Mm -hmm. But then we have responsibilities in life to transform ourselves and not just stay there stuck. It's our responsibility to take what God has given us yeah. and use it for the glory of God. We should fulfill those things which are beyond us, understanding the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who died and shed his blood, that we can have this right to eternal life. Romans 6, 3, 
4 and 5, it teaches us that as indeed we die with Christ, that we are resurrected with him into the newness of life. And then God gives us redemption. The passion that he has. Why he came. He died on that cross at Calvary. He shed his blood. He was strung up high. So that you and I could have the right to eternal life. And then on the third day, <coughs> he was resurrected into the newness of life. Yeah. Where he now sits with the Father, the Son, yeah. and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <coughs> All these and more are involved in starting a new life as you transform yourself from the Christian point of view. So I invite you today to forget what is behind you, to foresee what is before you, and to fulfill what is beyond you, enabled by the anointing, the power, and the passion of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who came and died and shed his blood, that you and I could have the right to eternal life. Yeah. Whatever your life has been in the past, whether you've been rejected, accepted, whether you've had success or failure, rejoice, rejoice, rejoice in the newness knowing that you can transition yourself and that you can have a fresh start in life. Amen. Yes, yes. Amen. Lord Jesus, we thank you. Thank you, Lord. For your love and your peace. We thank you for your patience. Transition our lives. Help us, Lord, to be all that we can be for your glory and for your kingdom. Not for ourselves. For we know full well, hallelujah, Lord Jesus, that there's going to come a time that we too will have to face the eventualities of life like my mother is doing right now. We might not be in a situation where we can get some ice cold water where someone will bring us ice cold water. Let us stop being puffed up and thinking more highly of ourselves than what we are to. Let us come to the reality to know that life is but a fleeting moment in the night. Indeed, a mist in the moonset wind. That as our lives transition and God brings us into the newness of life, that if we have failed to transition ourselves, then we'll be stuck in the dilemma of confusion for eternity. Yes, God, we ask you to transition our lives and transition ourselves. That we will have a fuller and complete understanding of the saving grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We invite you today to join us, Service for Christ Baptist Church. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 My brothers and sisters, we have a way that you can contact us. If you would like to share with us, please feel free to join others who have shared. And you can do that by reaching out to us on our website, which is servantsforchristinc.org. Servants for Christ, inc.org will give you all the information that we have. It will illustrate our Bible study on Wednesday nights. It will give you comfort to know that we have the Gospel Truth Special Edition that will come on at 11 o'clock today. In addition, we broadcast in Prince George's County, CTV Television, every Sunday every Sunday at 2 o'clock on channel 42 or 76. <clears throat> in addition, we broadcast in Washington, D.C. on D.C. TV. D.C. TV yeah. every Tuesday at 6 o'clock p.m. and every Thursday morning at 11 o'clock a.m. You can reach us there or you can simply go to our website at Servants for Christ, inc.org, and there you will see today, just put up today, a membership application where you can join our church. Amen. Transition yourself. Yes. Transition your ministry. Yes. Transition your household. Transition your wife. Transition yourself is our theme for 2021.
May God bless you and you and you and you. May God bless you all. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we give you all the praise and honor, and we thank God for everything that he's done. We're going to move now into our communion service. Well, thank you who have joined us on Facebook, on Zoom, for all of you that have joined us on our social media, on our television broadcast. We're going to have a great and successful year at Servants for Christ Baptist Church or wherever the Lord leads us to in the name of Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You can close us out with the cameras. You can close us out in the name of Jesus. We thank you. We praise God for every single thing uh, that he's done. Amen. Amen.